Traders weighing new inflation data today after the Fed's preferred inflation gauge core PCE increased 0.3% in the last month and 3.7% year over year. Let's bring in Mona Mahajan, uh, senior investment strategist with Edward Jones, and Ronan Sana, chief market strategist with Dynasty Financial Partners. He's also a CNBC contributor. It's good to have you both on. Mona, I'll start with you because I'm looking at the S&P right now. 4116 is the level. I mean, we broke mm -hmm. through that key 4200 level earlier in the week. Um, earnings have been a bit of a mixed picture. Yields, yes, they've come off a little bit, but still high. And we do have this geopolitical uncertainty with headlines, even just in the past hour, that show signs uh, that this could be a bit risky, at least going into the weekend. What does an investor do? Yeah, it's a great point. And look, I think we've broken some technical levels on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, both of which had actually held in above their 200-day moving averages, uh, except for the last couple of days when they've broken lower. So that does imply that perhaps some additional volatility, some additional downside momentum may be ahead of us. Now, you know, to your point, it does feel like from an economic perspective, we got a great GDP print this week for the third quarter. But keep in mind, that was backward looking. So the 4.9 percent will likely cool in the months ahead. We know consumers are facing some additional headwinds. They've worked down a lot of their excess savings. Uh, we are seeing interest rates still high, mortgage rates still elevated. And of course, bank lending standards are still pretty tight. So that all leads to, you know, heading into earnings season, expectations were high. We had four of the Magnificent Seven reporting. They all reported pretty well, but I think the high bar, for some extended valuations, frothy stock prices, all led to this sell the news reaction. And you, you combine that or pair that with an economy that may be cooling going forward, or perhaps the peak is behind us, um, that leads to this volatile market environment. Now, all that being said, we do think as we look into 2024, we are entering an environment where inflation could continue to moderate, maybe not in a straight line lower, um, but we could continue to see moderation. We do think yields are headed towards a peak and earnings growth, while they were flattish this year, could start to reaccelerate next year. So using this volatility, we think, is an opportunity for, for investors in the months ahead. Ron, do you see it the same way? And just looking at the GDP number that we <laughs> Almost got. Almost exactly. Actually, I have uh, virtually nothing to add at this point. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. <laughs> well, I am going to ask you, Ron, though, this GDP print that we got yesterday, I mean, we're going to look back on this and say, this is it. This was this was the peak of this of this economic cycle. Yeah, I suppose that's true, Morgan. And and I also agree that I think right now uh, one of the things that's getting in the way of a typical seasonal rally is the uncertainty that we have around the Middle East, with as you mentioned earlier, the intensifying ground action in Gaza and 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 the attendant potential for. Uh, U.S. involvement, the U.S. hitting uh, two targets in Syria that were presumed to be Iranian-backed uh, operations there overnight. So, yeah, I, look, I think inflation is coming down. I think the economy is going to slow. I think at one juncture next year, the Fed becomes a, a tailwind rather than a headwind because we will, and I heard uh, folks talking to Barry Knapp earlier in the day from our inside macro, we have a wall of commercial real estate debt and multifamily ho housing debt coming due next year that needs to be refinanced. And I think that's going to cause enough of a enough turbulence in the marketplace everything else notwithstanding uh, that the fed ultimately does decide to pivot but that's still several months off but we've probably seen the high water mark in rates growth and inflation is my best guess so so ron if i could just ask you to elaborate a little bit inflation is slowing but is the slowing slowing in inflation <laughs> yeah I, I think it will tyler i think you know when you when you look at uh, what's likely to happen going forward and you know what we don't talk about is oil prices may be up but gasoline prices have crashed natural gas prices have come down copper prices have come down lumber prices have come down all these leading economic indicators and some pocketbook costs uh, have rolled over, uh, certainly in the last several weeks. So, yes, you know, the one thing we, we can't cure is, is the one-time elevation that we have in prices in a post-pandemic environment, where, broadly speaking, prices are up around 20 percent uh, from where they were before the pandemic. We're looking for a slowing rate of growth, and I suspect that's certainly what's in the cards ahead, assuming we can also get some relief on the mortgage front, which would reduce the cost of shelter and also then ultimately mm -hmm. bring down consumer prices. Mona, since you sounded, uh, dare I say, constructive on 2024, where do you put money to work? Is it stocks? Is it bonds? If it is stocks, where specifically? Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, we see opportunities forming in, in the equities and bond space. And in fact, in equities, we would say there'll, there'll likely be a more broadening of market leadership and market participation. You know, yes, the, the Magnificent Seven had led the rally this year. Um, but if we're in an environment where we do have better inflation trends, better uh, yield trends, we could see a broadening. And 
even as we reemerge from potential softening, keep in mind areas like small caps, cyclical parts of the market, even parts of international that have really gotten beaten up could play some catch up in that environment. And what I'll add briefly on the bond space, you know, we really see a pretty compelling opportunity forming, especially in investment grade bonds, where you have not only, you know, locking in uh, yields for a longer period of time and longer duration assets, but this potential for price appreciation if and when the Fed eventually pivots uh, to lower rates. So we do think over the next few months, there's this real window of opportunity um, to lock in some of these investment grade bonds at uh, really getting a nice income boost to your portfolio uh, alongside some of broadening and equity participation. So we think opportunities in stocks, opportunities in bonds, and the 60-40 portfolio still remains alive and well. You may have some variation around it, 80-20, 70-30, but we think bonds still play a meaningful part in portfolios.